Hello again. We're back. We never left. Oh, hold on. There we go. Had the computer audio on. What's up, everyone? Good morning. Good morning or afternoon or evening or wherever you may be in the world. We are back. Oh, we got some toys. Golgor. It's the plant. Um, yes, welcome back to the Honeymoon Drips production breakdown part two um, with very special guest, Nathaniel Motti, producer extraordinaire, most well known for being the tall guy in 303. Being the painter. Being the painter in 303. Um, What's your beverage situation, Cam? Oh, yeah. Bev check. <sighs> we're a little tired today. We think it's the allergies. So we're going to get the energy going. But Soleil, grapefruit. Cam's working on that sponsorship. Could, uh, <sighs> it could also be the Cam very kindly got me a uh, breakfast burrito. Yes. That we smashed. Yeah, we smashed some burritos just because yesterday what kind of uh it kind of took over the lunchtime and I have a very strict schedule of eating. Do you still not eat after 8 p.m.? I still don't eat after 8 p.m. <laughs> and I still don't eat before 11 a.m. And then yeah, I had a breakfast at like nine, and then my whole schedule was super, super screwed up. So I didn't eat lunch till like 2 30. We're gonna start a podcast called uh food scheduling. Called food scheduling. Um Hey, Dale's here. Hi, Dale. Dale. What's up, man? We love you and miss you. Um, bunch of the homies. Everyone's here. This is awesome. Good to see everybody. You guys came back for more punishment? Yeah. Michael, McDonald's? Chachi. Chachi, uh, when will you make a vinyl? You make quality vinyl, best material. You, you do it right. What? When you make a vinyl, you make... Oh, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, Chachi just got his heavenward vinyl in the mail. Hey, I, uh, Chachi, do you like your happy happy days chachinated or dechachinated? He's taking it back. <laughs> he's taking it back. So we got Scott in the house. Scott. Scott says he's drinking water. Just kidding. It's Red Bull, of course. <laughs> Scott, we need to get you the sponsorship. Scott, um, yeah, you need to reach out to the local Nottingham uh, Red Bull rep. Gemini Complex has got water. What else have we got in here? Turbo Killer just had a root canal earlier. Bless you. Oh, man. I hope you're doing all right. Just drinking scissor. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dad Kisser 69, definitely one of the best Twitch handles. Yeah, that's the best one. Um, he has a new Mango <laughs> Liquid Death, MSG Pizza Rolls. These are great names. I mean, I, I, they, they, I never get, every time I stream, the names just, they're so good. Um, what's, um, what's Liquid Cranberry Death? Juice. Is that like a hot sauce? You're just drinking straight hot no, sauce? No, liquid death is, it's just not water. It's just wa canned water. But dude, it's one of Jesse Dixon's friends who co-founded like, co the company. Oh, wow. It's incredible. I was like, Damn. I was a fan of it. And then I started noticing that guy, John Ryan. Remember him? Yeah. Yeah. He co-founded Liquid Death, which is amazing. I'm like, holy crap. Um, so uh, what else we got? We got Ethan. What's up, Ethan? Ethan's got water uh what's dale drinking what's dale drinking yeah he's got zero beverages alert dale you blew it dale are you at work i miss dale we've talked about dale a lot mm -hmm. on this twitch channel um and obviously shouting out to him because he was the first drummer in chain gang toured yep. with me for years had shared really really great experiences the best with drummer in chain gang the best drummer in chain gang straight up um but Shout out to Dale. <clears throat> Dippin' Yo. What's up, Dippin' Yo? You got some iced coffee. I had an iced coffee and a Red Bull today, so I'm, I'm going to feel a little crazy today. Um, but if you joined us yesterday, we did part one of the Honeymoon Drips production breakdown. We got to talk about the record. Um, we're sharing the Logic sessions, going through all the tracks, going through everything. And it, it was a lot of fun. I believe yesterday we did uh, Honeymoon Drips the intro track. Uh, we did... The herd is good. And 4 a.m. Bruce Hornsby. And 4 a.m. still horny. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool to break down these songs with Nat. And um, if you didn't know, this is your first time uh, joining the stream. Nat co-wrote and produced um, eight songs on this record. So I thought it would be a really, really cool idea to 
get together with him, break this up into a couple of parts. We've got five songs left on the record to talk about. Don't know if we're going to do it all today because yesterday ran a couple of hours. So I'm not sure if we're going to do a four hour stream today, but um, we'll most likely do part three sometime next week. Just got to work on schedule stuff. But yeah, we figured may as well break down two or three songs today. And let us know in the chat how, uh, what your comfort level with nerdiness production <laughs> nerdiness is that got pretty nerdy yesterday yeah we got real involved yesterday which was fun for me but might be real boring for everybody else so let us know we also <clears throat> big news we stayed up all night did a lot of research and we have stereo audio we have stereo audio in because theory. somebody <laughs> complained yesterday in theory the audio is now in stereo as opposed to mono as it was yesterday. So when we we're actually discussing panning some of the, some of the tracks left and right, it actually made zero difference to anybody. Um, so we worked real hard. I could say we're, we worked diligently. Yeah. It took about 10 minutes, if that, five minutes, maybe was 10 minutes is pushing it. Definitely took five minutes. Um, and I'm actually, this is something I probably should have been doing from day one of starting my Twitch channel, but I am recording this stream. So I'm going to upload this and probably some of the, re you know, remaining streams that I have coming up this month to my YouTube channel. Um, I should have been recording yesterday's stream. I didn't do it. So I am recording this one. Hopefully well, good. There was it a does of, work. There was a bunch of kind of fucked up shit in the stream. What, were there? Was there? No, it was pretty good. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Was um, but yeah, people are saying to go full nerd. All right. We'll go full nerd. Um, Chachi666 says, Nat creates magic on the computer. Groovy dude. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Chachi. He is a groovy dude. I'm a Chachinated man. Hey, we got Boa the Snake Man. What's up? Let's see that snake. Smash a snake Smash emoji. Smash a snake in the comments. <laughs> um, Are the comments coming through? And the they're like on the art. They're, they're right on below the, me. Yeah, they're on the screen over there. Sponsored. It's on your shirt. It's on your shirt. Sponsored by Honda and Twitch comments. There we go. Would you guys prefer if we just play computer games on this? <laughs> we can just talk about all my bootleg t-shirts. <laughs> we can just talk about... We can talk about... Rocks. Hey, Gemini <sighs> Complex. Thank you for the sub. Very, very kind of you. Oh, he gifted the sub to Dippinho. What? Bravo. Man, you guys are nice people out Not there. Very nice people out Chang there. Chang Gang fans are the best. Yeah, I've, I've, re I've truly realized that this year. Chang Gang fans are fantastic. Hey, we got a first-time chatter. It is... Wonder long, fame. Long time watcher. Wonder fame. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, so yeah, part two of the stream. Um, I want to just, you know, going through these songs yesterday, for me, this record is special. Not only the fact that I truly do love these songs, and I think that this record is such a genuine representation of where I am as a, as a musician now, and especially with this project, but the fact that this record was completely self-released, um, self-produced with these amazing people and amazing producers and collaborators, self a and self-designed. Essentially, it was done all within this like tight, tight-knit group of friends to create this record and kind of go against the mold of the music industry. Um, and honestly, I didn't really even have management till maybe like a month into, or I had, I had parted ways with my management company. Um, and that just kind of adds more to, I think how special this record is that it did make an impact on a lot of people, mainly myself, but I think it's very, very cool. It goes to show that you don't have to follow the rules in, of the music industry and what, you know, I think the industry tries to convince you to do as far as signing to a label doing this, doing that, you are able to do it on your own and you are able to have music reach a lot of people. And, you know, on just Spotify alone, this album has almost 3.3 million streams. The instrumental version of it is approaching 200,000 streams and that's just Spotify. And I want to thank you all so much. And I think going and obviously thank Nat for being a part of this record and opening up his door, opening up his creative mind and allowing us to, I think, make something that is special and, um, it's, I think, next to Daydream Forever is probably my favorite Chain Gang record. So, but it's a testament to you, too. I think it's a testament to your relationships, your friendships that people are, you know, and, and myself, I'm very much included. We're delighted to work with you, delighted to, to figure out how to release it independently and Hell yeah. just do it 
do it on your own, on our own. And um, yeah, man, I mean, I think it's just a, a testament to, to great relationships and it's uh, an example for all of us. I think, you know, for sure. We're all I agree. nice to each other. You got a bunch of nice, cool, creative people in the chat who are getting hydrated on their weird beverages <laughs> and I'm about to watch us dive in. Yeah. I love it. So I just wanted to put out, put that out there. And um, yeah. So thank you all so much. It was, it's very cool. And it, you know, every time I do re revisit this album and being able to do this, do that during this stream is very fun and very cool. And I think makes me and I probably speak for Nat um, much more grateful and inspired by what we did. So yeah, just wanted to say that, but um, let's dive into some songs. So if you weren't here yesterday, we just broke down the tracks, uh, discussed the songs, discussed, you know, how the recording process went. Um, you're getting a bird's eye view into the actual logic sessions and um we'll just kind of go from there so i think we're going to start with what are we starting with today philosophy, philosophy of, love. of love okay we're going to start with philosophy of love today and break that track down um chachi so some people are asking about some other songs so the tracks that i worked on with nat are eight songs on the record um honeymoon drips uh the hurt is good fervor i think we need to sleep uh philosophy of love for i'm still lonely champagne saturday and there's one more they're right here is that eight well the i think we need to sleep i just mixed i think and did some additional production right i forget <laughs> no you co you co-wrote eight uh, songs in the record i didn't think you? so i uh, we're we're forgetting some it's all good we're forgetting something oh uh chick magnet no, well, hold on. What did we do? <laughs> we did. What did we do yesterday? Four. Oh, four. I'm so lonely. I think I forgot about that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, um, to short answer your question, which I clearly didn't do, uh, <laughs> you don't love me anymore. Was worked with um, another producer, Jason Suito, of the band Sir Sly. So we will not be focusing on those tracks. Um, Jason won't return Cam's phone Jason calls. won't return my calls. Got so. a restraining order. Yeah, exactly. I'm no longer allowed in uh, Costa Mesa. It's weird. <laughs> But, um, but hey, Glendale, arms wide open. Glendale, exactly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do philosophy of love today, and um, along with a few other tracks. So let's let's go. Cam's gonna open up the window, and um, again, yesterday we kind of touched on some of the elements that were um, kind of pervasive throughout the record, and some of those things, you know, from kind of these um, sonics and these production sides of these kind of drone chords and pads that are pervasive throughout the the songs that we'll highlight um we we talked about some vintage synths that we use these june roland juno synths and so we'll spotlight those and then this this song actually had some of those elements those kind of pervasive um kind of ongoing um melodic elements that were done on on guitar which is a little bit different from the other songs um, yeah i think this one as far as like choice of instrumentation, production, we do still use some of the same elements as far as, you know, obviously spotlight in the Juno and stuff like that. But this one, I feel like in comparison to all the other songs in the record is kind of a more full song, um, fuller with instrumentation, a bit more faster tempo in a way. But I feel like everything in this record is pretty mid-tempo. Um, but yeah, I like, yeah, I'm excited to dive into this one, but Cool. Let's, uh, should we play it? Yeah, let's play the track. And that's that Jimmy E. World style guitar I was talking about. Like that guitar that's just constantly going under everything. That was, I remember we were riding that. I was like, Jimmy World, and I showed you a rapper. I flew too close to the sun, now the projection of the one knows I'm mixed up. Knows I'm mixed up. It's too much. I see there's honey on your tongue. Shut up. Come clean. You're killing all the fun. That's enough. Give me a buddy I can touch. Philosophy of 
has survived. Is there a crystallizer on that acoustic guitar thing? I think so. I bounced it out because it was uh, kind of took a lot of time off. Yeah, so this track has some interesting stuff. We can talk about this uh, guitar thing that we did. And like I said, I, I kind of exported some of the stuff in order to make sure this thing, or hope that this thing didn't crash. But um, this was just an acoustic guitar that Cam did kind of that solid strumming chord that just kind of goes through everything and provides that kind of sonic landscape, that pad around which our chords can it's move. It's there like the entire song pretty much. Yeah, I think, it, like, it, yeah, I think it's played the entire time. And I love it too, because it's like two pieces chopped together. So it sounds like a tape. It's like, there's something really cool about that. So that's in our verse section. And I think in our chorus, we just kind of flip some of the octaves. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is literally going throughout the entire song, <laughs> providing that drone. And then, so on top of that, we added that chord movement. So I think that was kind of like, you know, we talked a little bit yesterday about the songwriting process and kind of a lot of these things started with those kind of modes, those, those that kind of, that kind of feel the song key essentially, and then figuring out the patterns and, and the shapes of the, of, of the, the movement of the, of the chords underneath. So we. I feel like that chord progression too is like quintessential, like comp team. Totally. Eighth note, just rocking. And we were talking earlier before we started streaming. Um, I, I was trying to remember if we had actually recorded any live bass on this record. No, and I, I said- Which you're a bass player, so- Yeah, which like... is funny. But yeah, this record was very, and I think that I kind of did that on purpose because Felt had pretty much bass guitar all over it. Yeah. And along with Daydream Forever as well, but I think, and Wayward Fire. So I think this one was like, I purposely want to go simply or strictly just like, synth pads and like yeah. bass pads and stuff like that and we could i mean we we did a this is um a thing called a, it's a sample pack that's that samples a rickenbacker bass that's that's really actually great that i use all the time but it's we we kind of did it on we we should have I, I feel like we got lazy on this one but we uh we imitated the live bass here and then doubled it with a a pretty low kind of sub to to allow for some of that low register stuff to come through as well and again, I, on this one, I think we went kind of 
with that 80s pop drum groove on this. That snare is kind of classic. Kind of classic gated 80s snare action. Um, what else is interesting in this one? Oh yeah, on those those leads, well, I, I guess we can talk about these chorus guitars too that are kind of these dreamy 80s guitar chord. I, I forgot we even had those in there. Yeah, they kind of just double everything. Here's our another kind of static chord. That's that Juno, though. You can hear the, the fuzz. Yeah. But I love it. That's that real, like, that's that real sound. And here's the kind of the, what we call ear candy, kind of those sonic textures that you don't necessarily realize in when you're listening to everything together, but they just kind of provide that little, those little kind of magic elements when you're listening to the song. There's that high drone. And again, these are, so this one pretty hard. We were talking yesterday about um, side chain compression. So basically allowing this to move underneath the kick drum of the song to create that kind of breathing sensation where it's it's getting ducked as the kick comes in. And so it, it's kind of twofold because it allows the kick drum and that the, those rhythm elements to really come through the track and carves out space for that. And then also on the other side, I feel like it, it really, um, just creates kind of this breathing um, element that gives the the instrumental side some life. So the pulsing groove. So that is kind of all that stuff put together. And then we did have the what did you call it? The talk talk sense at the end. The, the, the talk talk sense. Yeah. Mark Hollis, I think rest in peace, will be proud. It started with this thing that, um, so again, this is a, a what we call a soft synth or a plug-in synthesizer. So it's it's a computer program that's that's mimicking kind of a uh, an actual outboard analog synthesizer. And this one is a Korg M1 that um, it's kind of like a classic 80s, 90s synth. Um, and there's a preset on there that I use a lot that's kind of like that Eurythmics That's the main line. And I think I we just doubled it up with a bunch of stuff. So this is the other one. And our trusty 106. Looks like there's a couple of them pan left and right. So hopefully y'all can yeah. hit that in stereo. That's the talk talk sound right yeah. there. So that's got a lot of what's called LFO. And LFO just kind of uh, is a low frequency oscillator that that modulates the pitch of the synth as as the line's playing. So that's that that's what's kind of bending it in and out of tune as you're playing it. And then we actually used another synth that we used um, a fair amount on this called a sequential circuit six track, which that's awesome. Um, that has some really kind of uh, sounds that are that you don't really find in other things. Totally out of tune, too. It's awesome. <laughs> it's a oh, wow. <laughs> it's amazing that all those together. It gives us such character. There are imperfections. There's uh, there's like a you know humanistic feeling to the to the performance of it. Obviously, because you have to have that with a Juno. Totally. What is this action? Oh, oh yeah. Straight. Great top gun here. Oh yeah. Goose is currently chasing a hot shot. And this was where I was very um, excited to uh, get Cam on some heavy hip hop uh, breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> half time. But that's that goes back. That's more like the '90s R&B shit. Yeah. Like that's like a 112 instrumental. Oh. So this is our bass in the chorus, and this is um, 
I think if, if we have some time today, I can show you some of these um, on the Juno 60 um, that's over here that uh, a patch that we used a lot on the record, um, just kind of low, really kind of fuzzy, cool, warm bass tone. This one's pretty distorted. I, I use this, this plugin camel fat all over the place on this record. There it is without, and then this just adds a ton of compression, kind of harmonic distortion filter on the top. What a difference in that sound though, with that plugin. Yeah. Um, any, any questions in the chat? Yeah, we got some, we got a question from Steve. Steve, Steve P P Fissner. I don't know. Uh, how much experimentation went into this or did you nail it in the first time? Um, <laughs> no, the first time. I mean, I think writing music in general is an experimentation, you know, especially when you come to that point where you finally discover an idea that, you know, is going to work. And I think that's been a strong suit that I've had within every time I've made a record. It's, I know what to throw away. I know what to keep. It just, I know what makes sense to me and what I love and what I dig. And it's, there are certain times I will put my foot down and be like, we got to just, we got to do this one. We got to see this one out, see it through. Um, but I think for the most part, once our process was once we kind of figured out whether it was like a chord progression or a drum beat or something good. And going back to what I was saying a lot yesterday, a lot of the, um, the Juno sustained chords would kind of help us build a mood totally. and then we would base a chord progression around that. But um, once you kind of figure out where, you know, the song's going to go, then I think that's, that's the experimentation, but that's kind of just creativity in general. Totally. Yeah. And we, I mean, it was definitely, you know, we have, some ideas that we started on this record process that that you know we didn't finish and that's i think that happens a lot in songwriting is that you try it some stuff and it doesn't necessarily stick and then you move on and that's that's great and then conversely like some of these i remember some of these songs we were kind of starting and trying to get that original vibe where where we both felt like oh this is this is cool sonically this is great um and kind of struggling to get there and then all of a sudden it was a shift it was like it was a shift of these drums sound great. We were working on this chord progression. And then all of a sudden one of us would start playing something different and be like, Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. And I think camps camp, you're, you're good about finishing stuff too. Like if you get excited about something and, and if you know that one part is good, then you kind of keep working at it and you keep working and you're um, very constructive in that too. Like sometimes people can be a bit maniacal and or destructive about their process. And I think that, um, you know, you're, you're good about sticking through it. And well, I cheated it. the system. And I've talked about this before though. I, I call myself the three chord wonder because <laughs> like 98% of every song I've written, it's the same chord progression throughout the entire song. Not this one though. Yeah. This one changes well, a little bit. Three chords though, in, the, right? in, the, in the chorus. I think three, the verse and chorus are different. I think because there's like a, it drops down. Yeah. It gets lower, but. I think it's still three chords though. It's still three chords. <laughs> The three chord wonder. I mean, that's rock and roll, baby. Um, but yeah, so I guess that kind of answers the question. Um, M. M. Femerson ninety five. You guys should do a stream where you make something together, like in real time. That could be fun. That could be fun. Um, but then you'd like really see you'd our, hear, our you, yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd see, see our true character arguing, arguing and yelling at each other about shit. Yeah, we, um, we do a lot of hitting. Let's see, uh, Boa, Boa Snake the Man, Boa Snake Man, the Snake Man. Um, do you ever like a sound so much from one project that you reuse it in the next? Yeah, I mean, that's the Juno. Yeah. That's for, on Honeymoon Drips specifically, that's the Juno. That was, that instrument and that synth was used on every single song. And you have, I think you have, you know, even if it's not the exact same, actual instrument you have kind of tones and and sonic textures that you use continuously throughout your you know chain gang projects whether that's a, a bass guitar with some chorus on it or you know um drums that are a little bit 80s flavored and, and reverb yeah. out. vocals that are that are we were talking yesterday the difference between kind of wet vocals that are quote unquote wet that are affected you know and, and have a lot of reverb and, and kind of a lot of that 
uh, those elements that that allow them to to really kind of become a texture as well as just a an instrument. Um, well, that's the beauty of finding a signature a signature sound that pertains. I think to you as well with like what you've done with 303, what you've done for outside projects with production and writing. It's very, when I hear, I can now pick out a song that's produced by Nathaniel Motley. Like I know it, I like know the sounds, I know what you use, I know the structure. That's because I got the drop at the beginning of all sudden. And my my signature, that'd be, we should actually do that where it's just this, Rain Rocks, how y'all feeling tonight? That's our stamp, that'd be sick. Um, so yeah, so but with the Snake Man, um, yeah. Um, you haven't talked about lyrics at all on this record. Well, we know you did a little bit yesterday. Someone asked you how yeah, you do your lyrics. Yeah, just the emo. What's me. philosophy of love? Philosophy of love is just like, you know. Yeah, I, I get it. Just philosophize, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, just yeah. I mean, it's like that's my philosophy of love. It's like you know, a lot of this stuff. Sometimes I'll go back to past relationships and try and talk about those subjects. But this one, it's just like you know, stop with the bullshit. Give me something that I, you know, that I think we both need. I don't know. It's all personal weird stuff. But um, Jay Matchett, on the M1 sound, do you send all layers to reverb slash delay or just main forward layer? Yeah, let's check it out. Um, so this this is the M1 and I can kind of so I'm I'm taking on the left down here. I'm taking plugins off of the channel. So this is just the instrument uh, on its own. So as you can probably tell, it's it's um, the sustain of the instrument and the kind of the the resonance is is pretty sh short, like a lot shorter than we have it. Um, and so I added this compressor on it, which is again the compression is kind of um, allowing the the, the sounds that are louder to be taken down a bit and a lot and the sounds that are um the sounds that are quieter to be to come up a bit so you're you're squashing and and thus compressing everything and i'm doing it pretty hard here so it kind of just glues it all together this is um this is a transient designer it's called so this this allows the the actual attack of the sound so things that have a really high attack for example like a snare drum where the 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 hit of the sound is very quick and very strong um that is a very high attack and you can also kind of use this to enhance the attack of the sound so this kind of makes it a bit more aggressive when the the tone comes in that's without it and that's that um and then we had our trusty friend mr sausage fattener <laughs> um which is just this angry sausage that you can make even if you watch his face, he can he gets even more angry as you crank him up. I love that. Um, and uh, this is kind of just a, a compressor harmonic distortion plugin. It does a lot for the vibe. Um, and then this is our, I think this is our sidechain compressor. Yeah. So that's again, that's creating space for the kick drum. And then I think uh, EQ is this I used to just automate some eq levels to make it louder um, in the outro of the song and then um you're mentioning the the effects so yeah so on this on this particular m1 track i'm sending it to uh a reverb bus so again this this bus is when you do your reverbs on reverb sends like this it's leaving the this dry this dry audio plays as is down the line and then the effects are added on top of it instead of being in line with everything it's essentially kind of doing things in parallel so you have your main your main audio stream and then you have your other audio stream that you're sending it to that's rejoining it down the line as an additive effect and so what is this bad boy this is a, a shimmer reverb we're getting nerdy we're getting very nerdy here and so this is with it on so this is that shimmer reverb that's sidechain compressed. That's kind of really the Beautiful. last thing that adds all that that dreaminess on top. And then these other layers, um, looks like I'm sending kind of to that same super dreamy, washy reverb. This is um, something that I use a lot. That's from a buddy of mine. Um, that's a synth that sounds like this when it's raw. So it's real short and kind of squeaky, but then 
put it through this old school. This is like a, an old legacy plugin in um, Logic. It's their old guitar amp modeling. Um, and through there, you kind of get some distortion and some reverb on it. And then send it to the verb. Kind of gets big and epic. Um, it looks like these bad boys are just dry, but they um, they have a bit more of the tail of the audio tail, the resonance um, from the actual instrument itself, like the setting on the oscillator is such that um, it resonates out. That vibrato in there is incredible. Yeah, that little LFO, baby. Your fa that's that. your favorite band, right? LFO. Fuck yes. Uh, Summertime Girls, is that what it's called? Is that what it is? I like girls the way Abercrombie and Fitch. Said it and I had one wish. Shout out to Abercrombie. I know Damn, a guy LFO. who used to work there. Damn. I used to work at Abercrombie. I uh, know. I work. Okay. Little known, little, little known fact. Hold on. Let me give you a backstory. And when I say I worked at Abercrombie, don't picture me as like an Abercrombie boy. So let me just. I mean, paint, you can. Let I, me paint this. That would be kind of tight to picture me as an Abercrombie. But let me tell you the story really quick. It was, I mean, I had to have been 19 years old or something. Um, Is I it need, Park Meadows? Park Meadows Mall in, in uh, that like, mall was like the shit. It well. was a shit. I went there recently and it was it's kind of shitty. But um, I need a job, so I got a job at Abercrombie, and I was the only emo kid there. I remember I showed up with like skin tight jeans; they were ripped, <laughs> and then I was wearing a baby blue like extra small shirt of that band, The Format. And this is day one, like day one. And I love how you know your history by what band shirts you're wearing. Well, this, this, cause like, so I'm the only emo kid there. Literally, customers would walk in, like, ask for help from other people, never me. So the boss shows up, the wow. manager shows up, and she's like, we need you to go work in the back. So I essentially <laughs> got pushed to the stock room on day one. But upon walking into the stock room, after, you know, clearly knowing I'm, I'm an embarrassment to the store, <laughs> um, I get, I'm walking back there and I hear, they're only chasing safety by under oath, like blaring back there. I was like, who the hell's listening to under oath right now? It's just all the emo kids. And it was this kid Santino <laughs> who was an emo kid in Denver. And I was like, dude, you like under oath? He's like, I love under oath. So we became, I worked, and let's just say I worked at, I worked at Abercrombie for maybe three weeks and I like quit. But <laughs> it was the best um, three weeks. It life. was, but because of that three weeks, he, Santino, was like, you should meet my friend Brandon. No way, Dale. No, Brandon Paluska. Oh, yeah. He's, like you, should, he's like, you should be my friend, wow. Brandon. He's looking to start a band. Wow. So then I started this band called The Vanity, which was the band I was in before Chain Gang started. So, so Abercrombie is responsible for your musical career. For my career. musical career, in, in a way. And then when I worked at Hollister, Santino was the manager. So it was only emo kids working. It was so, pretty awesome. So you went straight from Abercrombie to Hollister. A few years later, yes. That's sick. But it was like, we called it Holocene because it was all the scene kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> So anyways, we got, we got sidetracked there, but, um, let me see. Let me try and hit a couple more. Hey, Indy Alex, what's up, dude. Thank you for the sub. That's amazing. Um, Akthea, what is that? It's so hard to read Twitch names. Cause like, you don't know where something ends or begins the first time chatter. Akthea third guy. Akthea third guy. Um, <laughs> Did you guys record any drums? So you're talking if I recorded real drums or it was all samples. So we actually there was no budget. We were talking about <laughs> that. The only track on Honeymoon Drips that has real drums are two songs that I did with Jason Sawito. Um, and I played drums. So I played live drums on Such a Shame. And then I played live drums on Do You Mind. That we still, there were still samples over the drums and things were like stacked on top of each other and layered. But we definitely, it's mainly for such a shame. There were a lot of, uh, you know, that song itself, I feel like is such an, it's far more based around guitars and bass and kind of more live sounds as opposed to synths. So um, yeah, there was that one. And I think in general, it's, um, I guess, I don't know. It's, it, it's a shame in a sense, but um, pop music is less and less live drum, actual live drum tracking goes down. A, I think it's, a matter of speed and time because it does take time it's a, it's for me it's a matter of my room here doesn't really have room for a live drum kit and i'm just so used to programming drums and you know if you wanted to get them to sound live there's so many kind of good um sample kits and and tricks that you can do to to do that and a lot of times when people do record live drums that like camp said they are layering anyways and kind of getting it to 
you know, and it, it depends on the, the project that you're working on. If you're working on something that's super, that's meant to sound super true and is less quote unquote pop, then, then yeah, it's awesome to track live drums, but it's also working in the, in the flow. It's a lot quicker yeah. and a lot easier to not. You do. also need a bigger setup. Like yeah. you said, like, you know, we can't, we couldn't do live drums in there. The, you know, a little, little fact, the only chain gang record that has live drums on the entire thing is felt. That's the only record that has live drums. And there were samples put over the live drums as well, but that's the only record where every single song, it was all live drums. Um, but so Dip and Yo, you were asking about lyric stuff. And, and if I'm weird about talking about my, my lyrics, I'm not weird about talking my lyrics and where they come from. I just never want to come off as like this weird sappy person, but um, yeah, it's not difficult because it's not difficult because I, obviously put those experiences and memories into words and into songs. So it's my way of getting it out there. And I do want to share it with the world. Cause I think some of the experiences that I've been through can pertain to someone else. But um, if you want to talk about that really quick, this song specifically, uh, the chorus says, I see there's honey in your tongue, come clean. You're killing all the fun. Um, give me a body I can touch. All I need for my philosophy of love. It goes, it talks about my ex-girlfriend bunch of cheating went on and now she's dead no she's not <laughs> no stop that um and yeah so it's like that's my philosophy of love like honey on your tongue she's like kind of tempting other people um i want a body that i can touch because she's been doing other stuff with other people so it makes me not yeah so it's kind of like that so I guess You're... I am a little uncomfortable talking here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Is that odd? <laughs> I guess I am a little uncomfortable. Um, yeah, you're good at situational writing too. You know, I think uh, as a songwriter, you all, you know, I guess there's some people who only write from their own experiences and only write from, you know, things that they that are feeling or felt. But it's also, I feel like a certain amount of your writing is, it's a character. It's like an act, actor playing a part. It's, yeah. Like, it's interpolating yeah, in a way for or sure. taking experiences from other people's things or from, from movies or from, and Cam, that's one thing like, you're you're great and you're very influenced by a lot of things a lot of visual things like a lot of movies that you grew up watching as a kid a lot of kind of vibes that you pull from ninja turtles yeah basically ninja turtles <laughs> and he does like turtles yeah i like turtles msg pizza rolls i'll take a shot now oh okay all right sure. i would we've gotten there um so yeah you want to let's hit some of the vocals on this track and yeah, then we can move on to the maybe another track yeah yeah let's uh let's solo so we talked yesterday a little bit about kind of our vocal setup for this whole record um that we did uh, at least the songs that we did together we you know i think tried to make cam's vocals kind of bridge the gap between the the super washy um vocals that are great in the past and then also bring cam's vocal a little bit more forward and a little bit more kind of present um in the mix and in the song um well i think i i had to finally come to terms where it's like you have a good I voice make, well it's not even that it's like i make pop music yeah it's like you know yeah i listen to darker stuff i mainly listen to punk hardcore you know alternative rock that kind of stuff but when it comes to the music that i'm making for chain gang it is pop focused it always has been so i think finally come to terms with that and especially writing a record like this where and i talked about this yesterday where it's so much more mellow in comparison to everything I've ever done in my life when mm -hmm. it comes to music. So it's like, I felt like if the vocals were even tucked back, like they were in previous records, it just wouldn't have made sense. So kind of come to terms with that, realizing that these melodies are poppy melodies, um, put them more up front, but like I was saying yesterday, give them that X factor, which is a bit more washed out, a bit more texture, not super, super dry, but I'm actually noticing that so much more in, like modern day pop music like yeah. tra like artists that are huge like you, there's so much more reverb on their vocals it's yeah. it's funny how that's kind of i'm actually going over i've kind of been drawn the other way recently really yeah dry yeah like totally dry totally totally <laughs> <laughs> totals um all right so let's just listen to this verse and see what happens still high on a long drive with a crazy mind Intertwined and locked in Cold skin to skin Chasing paranoia With nostalgia So there it is, kind of an upfront vocal with a, with a lot of reverb. There's a lot of reverb on this bad boy. Um, here it is without reverb, just for reference. Still high on a long drive 
Um, and so what we did, I, I looks like we doubled this right from the start. So again, it, this is Cam singing the same vocal line um, and then those pan left and right. So all you stereo freaks out there can mm. check it out. In theory. So those are tucked back a little bit from the main vocal that's in the center. And it just creates that, it creates a, a, a bigger texture. So it creates um, a bit of a, you know, a, a, like three people are singing it, which is essentially what's happening. Um, and then, um, you know, we do the same thing on, on the, what we call the pre-chorus here, where we have doubles going on. Let's call it even, does that sound good to you? Even serotonin can fix us. Oh yeah, I remember we did our little very high harmony here. Oh God. So the harmony is where he's singing um, the same words in the, at the same cadence, um, but in a different, um, on different notes that are- It's in... gonna sound very computerized, yeah. but it's mainly just for texture, so. Let's call it that's not pitch shifted either i am going that high yeah, yeah. am i singing it perfectly <laughs> G? Fuck no. knows i'm mixed up knows i'm mixed up yeah, yeah that's all of it together kind of creating that nice tapestry um and on this chorus so we have these, what we call the calls. So it's kind of a call and response chorus. Is it? It's too much. Nice harmonies on there. So we can do, this is all the, so we were talking yesterday about how the kind of the panning scheme. So panning is, is which speaker you um, turn the uh, tracks towards. So, so here we have our, our lead vocal here. It's too much. With some delay and reverb on it. Um, and then here are the left and right doubles. It's too much. And then we actually did some more doubles. And here you can see that these are, instead of being totally in the left speaker and totally in the right speaker, these are about halfway in between. So about halfway pan left, halfway pan right. So that all five of them are kind of operating on this axis that are, is straight in with the lead vocal all the way left and right with the, with the first doubles and then the second doubles are in so that you kind of get this surround sound of vocals it's too much chachi says chachi says squeeze them nuts michael jackson for pitch <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I mean, what do you think my That's job what Nat was? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think, think Nat's job, job was? was he, he wasn't just a producer. Yeah, I had to sign so many NDAs <laughs> for this fucking record. But, uh, here's our first harmony. It's too much. Damn it. <laughs> and then this is you doing that full voice, I believe. It's too much. You can hit it. So all together, they sound like this. It's too much. I like this one. It's sassy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I got really sad. Shut up. That's enough. Uh, okay, so those I like that. Goals. I like those parts of the song. It's really playful. Yeah. It's kind of this like conversation you're having with this person. I don't know. I love that part. It's cool. I see this honey on your tongue. And then we had our little harmony on the. So this is the response on the chorus. So this is what the. Uh... I see this honey on your tongue. Oh yeah, just the that one, one note. note. Give me a body I can touch. All I need from my philosophy of love. Barry White came Barry White. the studio. From Prince to Barry White. All I need from my philosophy of love. Oh, he was sexy. Um, auto tuned so yeah. and sexy. Yeah, auto tuned and sexy. Let's see, what is this? Uh, oh, yeah. This is, there's some, I think some good harmonies on this bad boy. So this is our bridge section. Oh, this is the Nashville part. Lost faith, what can I say? When you know, you know, and I know it shows. So that's our lead line. And then we have some harmonies here. Here's our first harmony. Lost faith, what can I say? Here's our second harmony. And here's that harmony, I believe, an octave below that harmony. So when you put them all together, they sound like this. 
Lost faith, what can I say? Wait, 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 wait. Here are the other harmonies in the response. When you know, you know, and I know it shows wrong way on a one way. Runaway train never coming back. Hey, wrong <laughs> way on a one way train. Was a key that could have used a little turning. Lost friends <laughs> on a one way. When you know, you know. Time to take your show, yeah. Chachi, you're getting too weird about the squeezing the nuts. <laughs> Chachi, you asked, dude. Don't fucking ask the question. If you don't. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Echo Confetti saying next Chain Gang album going to be full on dive vocals. Done. I love dive. What's Dive? Dive is a great band. But, um, oh, Diva Vocals? Oh, yeah. Oh, Diva Vocals. He's That's why be, I was just like, wait, you spelled Dive wrong. He's going to be singing ABBA Ab style, just all falsetto? I recently found out that my father-in-law's favorite band is ABBA. Stop. I swear to God. Bruce? Yeah, it's tight. He fucks with ABBA? Loves ABBA, That's apparently, sick. which is amazing. Liz went to the museum in Stockholm and said it was her best experience. Really? Yeah. That's kind of amazing. Let's all go to Stockholm. Um... Yeah, well, I think that's... That's it for this one. Can we hear just that little guitar solo before the second verse? Oh, yeah, baby. I love this guitar tone. And then we'll move on to the next track. So, yeah, here it comes. This is just a double guitar line. Go slide. Or we can make it go like this. Should we make it go like this? Our favorite slowdown phase? Perfect. Remix. Okay. Cool. Well, that's Philosophy of Love. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Let's see which one we can do next. We can do a quick interlude. Yeah, we can do the fervor interlude. Fervor. 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 Um, Scott's saying, I think we need to sleep. Maybe we'll do, we'll do that after. Scott, forever. just go to, you got to stop drinking Red Bulls <laughs> if you need to sleep. <laughs> if you need to sleep, the song. <laughs> no, but also. We, we know what you're talking about, Scott. Remember, Scott, remember yesterday when I thought we hung out in real life and it turns out yeah, I that's never sad. hung out with you? That's pretty sad. I wish I, I wish it were you. Who the hell was it? <laughs> What's his name? some random guy pretending to be scott no nah, i think it was maybe another scott i don't remember scott? but this whole time literally i thought scott was this other scott man i thought it was scott's dad scott's dad scott what's your dad like man shout out to your dad what's your dad's name what's he into does he like abba like uh like bruce don't don't listen to that <laughs> scott let me holler at your dad um okay so let's talk about um Let's talk about fervor. So this was, so you just, had you planned where you wanted this in the record or it was just kind of, you know, you wanted another interlude to kind I want of another interlude. set the mood. This one came a little later. I think it was like a little later as like, we had already had, we already had bulk of the record done. I was like, it needs something. Um, and I like the fact that the album is, is 13 tracks, which is awesome. I mm -hmm. feel like you don't, you don't really get, unless you're the 1975 and give you like 24 tracks, you don't really have 13 song albums these days. Um, and even though it may just be like an interlude, it was definitely something that I wanted. Just, I think just to kind of break up, break up the record. I feel like I've done that on the last three chain gang records with daydream forever. You have Moksha. And then on felt, you have the song that needs you where it's just like a minute and a half, two minutes of like, it gets us more like a real song, but kind of acts as an interlude um, to break up the record. And I wanted that for this one too. Cool. Let's play it. And then we can dive into some stuff. I feel like this one's very sound designy. Yeah. Shout out to all my designers. <laughs>
that fur out there and yeah, this one has some cool stuff. We this I was laughing at this because my our my buddy Sean Sean Foreman three hundred three lives right by this school in Echo Park. And it's, yeah, I guess someone it, just it's asked. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, someone just asked. But uh, I think I was like pulling up to his house one time and and parked, and it was I I do this a lot. Um, just record what we call field recordings. Um, I think this one. I guess this one I actually recorded on like a field recorder that I had, um, but I do it on my iPhone or anything. Like sometimes when you're at the beach or, or just kind of, you know, walk around a forest or something and you hear birds, you just kind of record that and then incorporate that in your, into the songs. And it, it kind of creates this, this cool thing. So anyways, it was, I think it was recess at the school. So you were just a creep outside the school. Uh, with the microphone. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. I, maybe I should admit that, but uh <laughs> But yeah, so shout out to um, whatever the school is there. But this is what it sounds like on its own. So just a standard, Very wholesome, standard recess. Um, and then I think there's a lot of low end in there, a lot of sub. So I um, chopped that out and then added a, this is a sample delay. So this kind of like, and stereo allows it to um it delays it a bit in the left speaker and the right speaker create a bit of a stereo field and then added some delay on it this is the delay added some more delay this is a cool kind it of it just makes it sound like a dream yeah it's amazing kind of resonant delay on top of this on top of that And then um, what did we put on here? A little bit of that shimmer or uh, trusty friend, this kind of cool pitch shifted reverb plugin. It kind of smooths everything out and creates this cool tapestry of sound. It's very Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> like legit, like in the scenes when like they enter the dream world and it's like all the kids running around, literally it sounds like that. It's so cool. So that was the thing. Here's our our trusty Juno 106. Yeah, classic. It's beautiful. Kind of um, nothing too much done outside on this one. Just um, or I should say outside of the synth. Was, we just kind of muted the the frequencies to kind of create it just a, a, a kind of a softer tone. And then I think we're sending it to some chorus and a bit of reverb. So again, that's, that's like kind of that feel that tapestry. This is the the Bruce Warnsby um, piano line with that chord. We'll highlight the chord, and if you guys want to shout out, maybe it's a sus chord as well. <laughs> Again, that's I think it's that M1. Um, I, think I, I think I played that. Yep. And the funny thing is, I don't know theory at all. So I don't know what I'm playing, where I'm just kind of basing everything off of like the, the black keys and I'm basing it off of like a number system. So, um, you know, I, I'm like this finger needs to be two down from that black key. And I just kind of re I'm remembering it from there. But I feel like that part was also very like it was in a way kind of improvised. Totally. I think it was just like, okay, yeah, that yeah. works, that works. And then we maybe like nudged think, yeah, one note or we something. Shaped and, it, yeah. shaped it around to, to make it feel right. Um, and then again, here we had, we talked about this yesterday. I think this is this, this arpeggiated thing that we kind of play with the, the time, the, um, the speed of the arpeggiator as it comes in and out. And the filter is coming in and out. I love that slowdown. And then this is this line over here is just sending it progressively to this reverb at the end to kind of wash it out. So that was that. And then this bad boy, what do we got here? Our 
Jesus. That's cool. And then at the end, yeah, we kind of created this. Um, you know, that reminds me of what's close that? encounters of the third kind. <laughs> See, he draws inspiration from movies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And then this I was uh, raised by a television. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well. <laughs> this is that omnisphere, real warm bass tone that I like to use a lot, that we use a lot on this record. And then we sent everything to this uh, plugin that kind of starts to distort as we get on and repeat. Uh, and I wanted that ending to perfectly kind of go into um, times we had without it being super, super straight. So that's why you can tell the very, very end of that, it kind of starts to warble a little bit and like break up, which I think is perfect because it perfectly goes right in that first uh, sustained Juno chord that's happening in times we had. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that was, that was really, really cool. And that's always the fun parts too. I think when you do certain interludes for records, it's like a puzzle piece. Yep. You know, you you try and figure out how that end's going to work with that beginning. I always like that kind of stuff. I think when I finish a record, sequencing an album is one of my favorite things in the world. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. It's like that moment you've been waiting for, for however you know many months you've been working on the record, and then you finally get it done. I, I think that's super cool. Who's talking in here? No one's really talking, to be honest with you. Is anybody still there? Uh, yeah. Um, what is that? CY Bunnies. Reminds me of the beginning of Shangri-La. So, leader of the pack a little bit. Mm. Shangri-La is leader of the pack a little bit. That's cool. I am unfamiliar with Should that. Should we do, um, I think we need, where, or no, sorry, this goes into um, times that we had? That goes into, yeah. So why don't we just go into times we had since that's like that song is next in the record. Um, I do have to go to the bathroom. I will. I'll talk. I'll kill time. So he'll kill time. I'm going to go pee oh, and I'll be right back. I can play. Do you want me to play the song? No. Oh, well, just, you can just wait till I come back. Okay. Are people going to laugh at me in the chat? Nine Chanel shirt is insane. It's a bootleg. A very sick shirt. Look at that. Oh, wait, wrong sleeve. There we go. Oh, yeah. No, I know who the Shangri Laws are, but I don't really know the music. I never stuck with the 60s. It was always for me 80s and on. But Nat, you were you're big into 60s music. Big time. I actually didn't, didn't don't know the Shangri La. I mean, I know the name, but I don't know their music. All right, I'm gonna go pee. I'll be right back. I'm gonna steal this microphone. What's happening? What's happening in the chat, people? Yeah, I know. We'll be fine in here, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Going on YouTube. What? Yeah. How's it going, people? Scott, you got a new Red Bull out there? Any new Red Bull people out there? Tears for Fears. Uh, yeah, MSG Pizza Roll says Tears for Fears. I'm, Cam will tell you that's a huge influence on him. And we we did reference a bunch of um, kind of, we talked about it yesterday a bit, but uh, we did you know, listen to a lot of Bruce Hornsby actually on this record and a lot of um, the Blue Nile and Tears for Fears. And I think, especially on the drum tones that we were going for, um, they're pretty influential on our stuff. Oh, thank you. Uh, Chachi said, it's very cool what I do on the computer reminds me of yellow. That's super nice, man. Thank you. Um, I guess it's just too many, <laughs> too many hours spent clicking away on a computer but yeah it's funny i i think that i mean i grew up really i guess i i grew up playing um initially piano and didn't stick with it that long and i'm, I'm kicking myself wish i had but i can bang my way around the piano and then guitar but really um kind of programming and making beats and and producing early on um and it really kind of goes hand in hand with me with songwriting i talked about it a little yesterday as well but kind of it's all, kind of all one for me so the, the computer i mean might be cliche but i feel like it is you know it's a, it's its own instrument and i got some buddies who cannot play a single instrument at all but can play the computer amazingly well um and i think that that's it's awesome it's it's fun to um to be able to click and, and make the sounds that you want i mean that's what drew me to production originally 
in the first place was that you know you could i could like mimic the sounds of these records that i want and then come up with my own sounds and i thought that that was so exciting originally when i got into producing and i think that you know it's the, what that's what's great about kind of producing and hopefully i mean showing you guys some of this stuff too if it inspires you guys to do your own music it's it's so easy now and whereas like back in the day you know when before computer music was around you had to have some money or know somebody with a studio or really the process was so much more laborious now it's like literally if you buy a computer most computers come you know if you buy an apple computer most computers come with garage band or they come you know pc computers you can get cheap um music production software and it's just if it's fun for you and if it opens up creative creative um modes of, of thinking and expression it's it's easy and it's it's a lot of fun armor form andrew martin in the house oh <clears throat> shout out has he produced some music? Armor Form? Yeah. Probably. I want to hear some Andrew A. Martin beats. We got some 303 fans in the house. Oh. Hell yeah. Thank you. Um, times we had? Look at us. <sighs> times we had. How many of y'all out there had some times out there real rocks? Times we're here. <sighs> um, this is this is um this is definitely one of my favorite out songs in the record. Um I just think the overall vibe of this song is so good. It's very camp too. It is it's huh? very camp like Cam, we man, we joke, but it's also the best thing ever because Cam a lot of times on tour early us early on in the days, like you would when we'd be touring, it'd be so frenetic and so chaotic, especially those first years. It was just so busy that you, a lot of times when you're doing that and, and it, it applies to everything, traveling and working and stuff. Like, I think sometimes you get bogged down in what you have to do and you don't get a chance to like pull your head out and, and really appreciate what's going on. And Cam, a lot of times would be like the one who, you know, we'd be in Japan at a, at a festival and just like, and just having the best time, having some beers with our, our buddies and playing music and something. He'd just be like, Look at us. Look at us. We're out here. We got some yeah. white wine. We got we got good times. We got buddies. You have to true. you have to show the appreciation <laughs> of that moment, man. That's what life's all about. It's like soaking in those moments. It's true. It's I mean, those true. were some of the best times that we had. Hey, yeah. Red rocks, how are you feeling? <laughs> All right, let's play this thing, and yeah. I, then I'm gonna go use the old. Uh, where you can tell we're getting old because our bladders can't yeah, handle we, one yeah. hour of streaming. <laughs> God, we suck. We're 22 guys. Here we go. This was like leaving so much room for that kid locally. Right like that space. I love that. I, yeah, I focus on that a lot. With this
production though. I remember you were like, do. <laughs> and I was like, what? And I did. I was like, that's actually very sick. Yeah, fuck yeah. Very cool song. A uh, couple first time chatters. We got Jaro music, if I'm reading that right from here. And then also uh, floating thoughts. What's up, first time chatters? Thank you for joining us. This is a lot of fun. Um, is anybody going to beef at you for the 11 uh, snare hits at the end of the song? I love that. That's what I needed. Me too. Um, Floating Thoughts is asking how many vocal tracks are there? Well, we are about to dive into that. And vocal? also another question was, what is the vocal sample in the beginning? So the vocal sample is... Um, I, think I remember what the vocal sample was. I think was. it's one of our demos. Um, and it's something I do a lot because um, I, I find that it creates cool sonic textures. But... Um, so basically, this is this is the sound. So I think that's probably either me or Cam. So this is actually audio that's reversed, I believe. Yep. So if we unreverse it and then take the pitch shift off, this is what it sounds like. Ah. So it's just wow, that. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so it's that vocal reversed, and then um, this is what it sounds like reversed without pitch shifting. And then we use this uh, this built-in logic vocal transformer. So this this is a lot of times when you hear we call these vocal chops. They're kind of it's kind of using vocal lines more as an instrument unless as like a lyrical line um and a lot of times when you do that you you pitch shift them so you you change the pitch of the vocal um either up or down or, or whatever and there's a few ways to do that and i i a lot of times a lot of people use a, a plugin called um alter boy um that's that's very yeah. popular um and then i i alternate between that and this this logic one is actually great too so this is what it sounds like so that's uh that's up an octave and then um the formant is is essentially like the, the kind of the the throat of the vocal so where it is so if you don't change the formant it sounds like so you can actually this is what it sounds like um so an, like really low so an octave like. down yeah and then if you take the formant down so that's a lot you kind of well, i think early on that low vocal was popularized by the in the in the hip hop community in the rap community it's um it's called chop and screw so you can <laughs> take a, a vocal and just pitch shift it all the way down and it creates this cool like low take all the reverb down <laughs> and then so yeah we pitch shift it up an octave and then we change the throat to be a little higher the formant i think this is what we did the Sean Foreman. The Sean Foreman. So that's the. I feel like that's very EDM too. Yeah, yeah, totally. Which is cool. It was kind of cool taking. Yeah, I think that kind of that kind of whole plays into the whole. I was talking about this yesterday, but you know the fact that Nat and I finally decided to kind of really sit down and like make music to the, together because we have written music together. Um, I co wrote one 303 song, but it was like ten of us and. The song is called My Dick. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, man. <laughs> um, but also like, you know, we've done some like random sessions to kind of just like write some random songs and pitch them to other artists. But this was the first time we really kind of, I think, dissected each other's brains and just kind of had a science experiment and like really totally. tried to figure out, you know, what uh, what aspects from each party worked the best for this for this specific record. Um, Cause I also, you know, I said it yesterday, we come from different places musically, we come from different influences, but I think those two really worked very well to create something that I think was unique for this specific project. And I've never made a record like this. And I, I always kind of think about that and how stoked I was that we got to do this. Yeah. Likewise, man, we, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but for me, it was cool to to take a lot of your creative guidance and, and inject my own shit, like my own techniques and my own um, sensibilities. And also overall kind of take things a bit more minimal. And I know this looks like a lot and it is a lot compared to a lot of music, but it's, 
it's a lot less than some other projects. And I feel like, you know, just focus on those textures, focus on a lot of those. We keep talking about those Juno 60 drones, but that, that kind of allow those sounds and really sculpt those sounds and do, you know, as they were talking about the, the sound design to make those sounds the best that they can be and use those. Um, it's like, I, I guess we, you know, we talked a bit about you're cooking and you are creating this recipe, you're creating this stew of, of stuff. And in a lot of cooking, they, you know, they, they say that you just use less ingredients, but you just use better ingredients. And so, yeah. I think in a way too, though, it depends on how you look at it, but it is a bit more difficult totally. to create a song that I think will be impactful, will feel full with less ingredients. And that goes back to what you were just saying. It's like, you really have to kind of fine tune the choices of instruments yeah. and, and in a way, I guess, for lack of a better term, perfect it, totally. at least in our own eyes. Yeah. And we're taught, and you know, I, I think a lot of producers and songwriters are taught to just keep going keep throwing stuff and keep keep adding and adding and adding and adding and which um, in a lot of cases works in a lot of cases works it's creating that wall of sound you know if you know, phil specter back in the in the 60s kind of pioneered that that wall of sound where you just kind of just add and add and add and it creates this amazing tapestry and everything sounds thick and lush and everything but i think it's also so it's doing it's bringing those techniques and then also trying to to pull back and refine and, and not do too much stuff to to camouflage the things that are there that are dope um so here are those i feel like this is probably our little little drone thing. that's a juno right oh yeah and that that again just kind of sets the entire mood and then we brought in the the bass chords that move under that Sixteenth, that's uh, Drake. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> that one song where they do it. I love it. I got my eyes on you. That one. And then like the high synth, huh? Yeah. So this is. So this one is just that pitch shifted up, essentially. with that side chain that's allowing those things to kind of breathe as the kick comes in and out. Um, and then here's our little U2 sounding guitar. Yeah, I just called the edge, you know, he showed up. <laughs> and also like, I'm so I've talked about this before on other streams, I'm not a guitar player. Like I can kind of get by, no, you can play but guitar. I'm not, I'm more of a bass player, but I think the limitation, it kind of pushes me to find one thing that's going to sound really, really cool. Even if it's just literally holding on that one note, but just working around the actual rhythm of it. Yeah. And we traded off on this. I think I yeah. played that. And then you, you did this, this lead line um, that comes in on the post course of the second chorus, which is cool. Oops. You you play that some more staccato. Oh yeah. Three notes. So yeah, and then kind of similar treatment on these things. So th these are double panned a little bit left and right, but if it's if we just play it kind of dry just through the the amp modeler. There's some delay, some chorus, some tremolo on it. And then <clears throat> it's side chain compressed pretty hard. And then sent to this kind of uh, that shimmer reverb that we use a lot on the record, which is side chain really hard. Uh, 
So that was fun. Um, looks like we got some lead lines. Are oh, these our M1s? Yes, yeah, sir. Trusty M1 that we use a lot on the, um, it's kind of like our 80s, 80s piano. Um, that do this lead line here. What else do we got? Oh, we got our Farfisa. These are, um, speaking of the 60s, these are like early drum machines that are kind of low, low fi, very cool sounding. It's kind of, um, what's his name? Mark Mothersbrough used these a lot on the Life Aquatic soundtrack. Oh, yeah. They're kind of, uh, what about Rugrats? That's pretty Rugrats. <laughs> the <laughs> intro, yeah. I love that. And then we got some some Tommy Toms on here. Tune yeah. tune Toms. I love that high one. Yeah, I think we got some Tom fills. So we saved a bunch of money. We didn't have to get a drummer in here. <laughs> And we programmed our own drums. Drummers are expensive. Yeah, they're annoying to. No, I'm just kidding. We love drummers. Uh, what's going on here? These guys are. Oh, these, these are kind of dreamy reverbs on the heads, I believe. Yeah, that's sick. So with the chorus vocal, that adds this kind of even more dreamy landscape. It sounds like this. The times that we had. Times that we had, times that we had, the times that. And then we were laughing when we were playing the song because, I mean, it, and it, you know, it goes back to kind of the experimentation um, that you, the experimentation phases that you go through when you write the song. But um, Cam ended up doing some ad libs actually. The times that we had, the times we had. And I remember in the room, we were like, oh, should, should we try? Times we had all the times we had. Yeah, it just <laughs> did, it, it was like, did yeah. not work. <laughs> yeah, so we, we scratched that for sure. <laughs> I love this ad. times we had baby look at us the times we had i think that's pretty much it for this song any any questions concerns any questions or concerns Comments? pertaining to us as individuals or the song can, can you give a rating on uh on twitch or what? is it like a five star thing i think it's just a viewership oh, <laughs> but yeah i think hands down that's definitely one of my favorite that's definitely in like a top 10 chain gang songs in my opinion and then one of my favorite songs in the record um yeah it just fits it just fits the vibe you know it's so funny because it's like i want to i've talked to you about this before it's like if i make another record i definitely want it to be much darker kind of aggressive exp you know like electronic but then i listen to this stuff i'm like that would be fun to just do that again <laughs> yeah, you know i'm like i just it's so relaxing it's like yeah. it's like adult contemporary yeah, you're an AC it's guy. Like, yeah, it's like kind of tight. I mean, you listened to a little KBCO back in the day or what? Big Heads on the Monsters, oh, man. Baby. Shout out to Boulder, Colorado. Uh, looks like there are no more questions pertaining to the song. Nobody's typing. Cool. And no one's saying anything about... Should we do one more song? Yeah, man. All right, let's do one more. Any requests? What have we not done? Let's see what we haven't done. Uh... Scott keeps saying, I think we, I think we need to sleep. I need to get that one. Let's, right, let's do that one next time. I don't know if we have that one ready. And that okay, so that one little little backstory in that track. I co-wrote that song with my buddy John Kunkel of the band The New Division. Um, 
we, he co-wrote it. And uh, wait, I, I missed someone's question. Uh oh. You missed our question. What's your question, Armor Form? I didn't see. I see no question, dude. He wants to know what Nat's favorite Chain Gang song is. Um, man, I don't know. There's a lot. I'm partial to. We got the uh, disco. I mean, honestly, Devil is a Lady. <laughs> Damn, Devil's a Lady was okay. Yeah, fuck yeah. Wayward Fire. I'm not. I'm not embarrassed of Wayward Fire. I did the Wayward Fire bass playthrough a few weeks ago, and that was actually like some of those songs, like Ethical Drugs, where I'm like, God, this song is so lame. <laughs> when I was jamming it on bass, I was like, This is actually really sick. Yeah. I was into it. So, but no, anything, they're great. They're great. anything prior to Wayward Fire. No, prior I, to Wayward Fire. I love. I love a lot of your stuff, man. Across a lot of. I mean, I'm partial to these songs that we worked on too. I honestly, I mean, we talked about it yesterday. I love Champagne Saturday, and I mm -hmm. think that's like the least love song on this record yeah which is a bummer i think champagne saturday is an awesome song but yeah it's like least love song in this record which is a kind of weird that's weird that, how that happens but i mean i guess that's the case a lot of times is there is there let's say on uh on want like that was you know biggest three three record is there one song on that record that you were like why is this not more loved not uh i'm trying to think no and it's funny man like so you're we, saying it was just a hit all around <laughs> the, just a hit all <laughs> around the board must it was be nice pretty recognized which is amazing um and then when we play live shows which we we do a lot of still like we we play a lot of that record you know and i think that it's it's conscious on our part that um that's a, that's like people's favorite 303 shit and and that's am that's amazing i mean for us yeah like those those songs are are, are old but they're still super fun to play and um they're definitely you know you go back and listen to the actual recording of them i did that i forget why i was working on a project and i listened i'm like oh my god this sounds like shit that's but, crazy <laughs> but uh but yeah it's you know i think as an artist you always kind of you owe it to your fan base too to to, to play what people want to hear and funny little piece of knowledge as you know i, I played bass for three or three for like almost three years and it turned out we had discovered years later, because Nat and Sean have been very kind over the years, even when I kind of left my role as a, as a live member of the band, um, they would always kind of ask me to come back and play shows. So they're like, hey, we're going to go to we're going to Japan for two weeks to do some like, you know, Navy, you know, shows for the troops who want to come play bass. I was like, yeah, of course. And blah, 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 like a bunch of fun stuff. And then we discovered then. So this is years later that. I had been playing Starstruck, one of their <laughs> biggest songs wrong the entire time literally like a completely wrong note it was, it was <laughs> terrible so um it goes to show that but, hey you can you can, you can live your maker, dreams baby. and not, not be a professional <laughs> at all um so let's see what song i mean the only the other one i've loaded up is the infamous champagne champagne saturday let's do champagne saturday do you know uh i want uh champagne for my real friends and real pain for my sham friends what? What are you even saying? Scott's stoked. Scott? Scott likes us? Scott is stoked. See, I know I fuck with Scott. Scott's Scott's the legend. You know, we hung out in the UK once. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Champagne Saturday. So this, I feel like within the entire Chain Gang discography, this song is very different from what anything I've ever done before. Totally. It's very slow. It's very slow, but not even that the way the beat it's a it's very hip-hop focused yeah i think that's you know you really shine on that which was really cool and this album too knowing that i was going to go in and work with you i think i kind of told myself i'm like because a lot of times i can be a little protective and i was like don't do that just be open to whatever if it works it works and this worked in my opinion i think this song is really great this but was one that we struggled for a while i remember like we this is one where we were when we were developing that that sonic palette that they're kind of just building the the you know the base for for what we were going to do we were struggling with chord progressions and then i think we had a breakthrough on on our trusty juno 60 bass that was just a, again a three note bass line yeah that, um 
just felt right over this groove and all of a sudden we started writing melodies and getting and getting really inspired um, and it was cool to have that really salient breakthrough on this song this song is only two notes the entire time though right oh is it yeah i think it's only two you're right are they the same notes they might Probably. be the same notes let's play it here let's let's play the song oh, hold on let me put a little i know you guys like your shit a little limited so let me get on there all you freaks out there here we go Jane Gang goes hip hop. It got easy. Sick. Wasting breath on passing days. Please release me. Cause I can't be caught. First time um, chatter, Ch Tasty Jaguar. What's up? First time hearing you guys. Loving the vibe. Well, thank you. Thanks, man. This is if this is if you're just joining, this is Nathaniel Motti from the 303 Fame producer extraordinaire. He produced uh my 2020 album, Honeymoon Drips. And we're this is Camteen Mohajer. And we're we're going through everything. Chang it's Camteen Mohajer. Oh, oh god, dude. God. Whatever. Who are you? <laughs> um yeah so we're going through our song champagne saturday um this one yeah as we we're talking about it's different for, i think there's a lot of cool shit in this song though yeah so kind of right off the bat we again working with these droning elements these kind of pads that are pervasive throughout the whole song um and cam just played he refers to it as that kind of a jimmy world style 
um, guitar chord on this acoustic that we recorded back here on on the Neumann 87 mic. Um, it sounds like this. It's just the same. And we added that this. pitch. Yeah. So these these are kind of the that create that kind of baseline tapestry of what we're working with. Here it is, pitch down. See, I love that. That's so cool. And then kind of go through the whole song. And I think we'd probably bring in that little octave here. That higher octave. So nice. And these are these are probably some harps that I reversed. It's so funny though, those two together, the harp, whatever that is, and the, the guitars together. Beautiful. Yeah. Creates kind of a, a dreamy landscape. And that, I think that's, you know, that's something that was a, another big kind of uh, cohesive element, aesthetic element in this record is creating those dreamy landscapes and that kind of lush uh, landscape sonically. Um, here was our, the bass that we found that um that we used a lot on this record juno 60. there's two notes Some passing notes i think let's see That's carrying the low end of the track. Um, and then in the chorus, we got these. This is our, our probably our Juno. I was even going to ask for a second. I was like, did we have Juno in the song? Oh, yeah. And I mean, then we, the, we did. The bass is Juno. Too. Yeah. You know who I had in mind when I wrote and played that part was was Martin. Oh yeah, Martin. Martin Johnson, Johnson. The, the night game. Yeah, I yeah. was like, what would Martin do on this? <laughs> yeah. So shout out to you, Martin. I miss you. Super 80s. Um, but yeah, yeah, that that part's sick. I love the the tone you put on that one too. Is so good. There's our buddy. Our sad buddy. Our little sad melancholic bud. And yeah, I mean, as you know, I can't mention this is. It's a hip hop beat, basically, um, with some of those dreamy 80 elements on top. But if you listen to just. That little breath is sick. Yeah, this little breath is. Yeah, just what is a, that? I, this this little guy, just some ass that I did, and then there's a just a reverse out of that too. Yeah, see that that reverse breath is really cool. Yeah, it creates some human elements in the uh, percussion, um, and yeah, vocally, we went pretty crazy on this one. And Cam, this is singing really high and really some cool stuff um let's do this uh let's look at this verse section here I got hazy. so that's the lead vocal and this one we kind of went with some of that dreamy super long um delay that is this delay that's kind of filtered as it goes down I got hazy. you can hear it kind of muted and filtered as it goes on so we add those doubles I got hazy on a champagne Saturday, fucked and lazy. <laughs> Think I'm too old to run away. Nice harmonies. Kind of Phil Collinsy. Oh yeah. I get so high to numb it up. You bend and bend to make it rough. The sky is green. 
so we had fun with that and another thing i did consciously on this record was um when you're producing vocals a lot of times you'll you'll either really make them a lot less loud or take them out entirely breaths so as when you're singing naturally you're taking a big breath before you sing but i like this because it kind of creates that dreamy texture in the music and that human texture in the music so if you play that in the context of the song kind of creates that cool sweep and that organic transition element from one part to the next part um and then this course you went for it this course we actually did we treated a couple different ways so i think the first way we did it was this way So pushed a little bit, but still kind of mainly like head voice. Yes, sir. And then this one, you went for it. This was like added it on top. Yeah. Slow night fading head in hands. I hope I so all the leads <laughs> together sound like this. Slow night fading. So it kind of creates a nice texture where it's like. Sometimes you want to be a little careful when things are in a high register like that, where if you just have that that belty vocal, it just sounds kind of like a little duty, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it's nice to pat it out with some softer vocals. And then we added these low guys. Low, low octave. Night, fading, head in hands, I hope I and then we had some harmonies on top. Let's see what these guys are doing. A lot of vocals on this track. Big time. 16 bars of ooh oohs. <laughs> Blow nights. So that harmony on those lines. This is our second harmony. Blow nights fade in. A lot of texture stuff. Five nights. So we had fun on the vocals in that section. Um, this is our little bridge section. Falling from above like a retro kind of love Breaking hearts for you Now I know for sure that my pain is not for her Breaking hearts for two So yeah, we had fun on, on these. So the, on these responses, we used um, what's called a preverb. So this preverb is a, is a reverb. So something that's kind of like spaced out echoed that you actually reverse and it acts as a swell into the line. So, and then, so that feeds into these responses like this. That creates a cool um, transition texture. Uh, yeah. And that was your, that was like your real kind of rap bouncy flow. Yeah, that was my flow. The one time in my life I flowed. <laughs> and these are kind of our texture yeah. vocal ooh elements that we actually side chain these. So you can hear them kind of ducking in and out under the kick as well. So that's the side chain technique is something you can apply to, to everything. And it's cool when you apply it to vocals as well, especially these pads. We distorted them a bit and actually put some reverb on the channel. The way I see music, especially, you know, going back to the whole thing of sticking to like pretty much one chord progression that the entire song, simple things like that, the ooze to add to like the final chorus, just to differentiate it from one and two can make such a difference. Yeah. It's just that tiny bit of ear candy that helps elevate that final chorus to kind of, you know, let it be that grand exit. Yep. So I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff. I feel like I do that often with a lot of things, especially with songs that are based around one chord progression on repeat, totally. throw in one or two more elements for that last chorus and you're good to go. Like you don't need to like really worry about the fact that people have been listening to the same chord progression for the last three minutes. <laughs> 
and one thing we did on the end of this to create kind of those we did it on a few songs but to kind of work on the transitions between the songs and the outro of the songs is that we automated so autom automation is basically you're you're controlling the parameters on an effect as time goes on instead of just leaving it as a static kind of setting you're controlling that so here we had the distortion right at the end on these ooze crank up um you can see that from this little yellow line here that's um, going off towards an angle and you'll hear it as we play this at the end of the song so that's, that's taking hard the, cut. the mix on the distortion um out as the line goes on so this was a fun one man there's a talented man right here people very talented producer um a couple questions hold on uh floating thoughts is that guitar real amp so the, this virtual this one uh yeah it's again it's our the kemper, the kemper. That we can show you in a little bit kemper is uh it's a it's an analog piece of gear but it's a digital um, remodel of amps and and it's cool because you can i mean you can actually profile what's called profile your amp so if you have a guitar amp that you love you actually run it run these these kemper things run a test tone through it and you hook up a microphone to it and they run all these crazy tones and it takes a few minutes and then it'll actually model that amp itself and you can kind of re have a recreation of that amp and all of its textures and tones and stuff in in the um box and and what's great for that is is for for example for touring artists it's amazing because then you don't have to bring your amps out on the road and you can kind of have your a whole huge wide selection of amplifiers um at your disposal on the road and everything's clean and you don't have to worry about buzz or or kind of pedals going down or or um heads going down or anything like that and in the studio it's great too because it's fast um it's clean and it's fun just like us fast <laughs> clean yeah and fun um ak theor third guy how do you guys balance huge layers of effects for example reverb and delay uh, to still keep a clean mix. Well, I, I think that we were saying that earlier, you know, we, my whole concept with this record was simplified. Like how would a chain gang record sound if it was to the, to the, I think to the listener, obviously we're, we're here behind the scenes and you're able to see that it's not so simple, but from a presentation standpoint, um, the approach was how would chain gang songs sound if they were simpler? How would they sound if, you didn't have this kind of cliche explosive chorus like I think all my records did, but instead you just had this one line that's super breathy, but you had these very curated instruments coming in at appropriate times. Um, so, you know, figuring that out and obviously having people like Nat to work with, it, it clicked, it made sense. And that goes back to being far more selective, I think, with the instruments um, and your knowledge of instruments, your knowledge of production. I think for, for you, it's probably easier to understand if I'm like, Hey, let's play that. You're like, well, that's probably going to clash against this. So let's do this one instead. And then that's kind of the whole job of the producer. And, um, I think collaborator, but yeah. And it's, it, it is interesting. It's a good question. Like trying to, cause you know, it, this stuff can get away from you pretty easily and it can turn into mush, especially with so much reverb and so much delay and, and a lot of layers. And I think that that, um, you compensate by, by learning your your own kind of idiosyncratic process of mixing and in my in my experience yeah i mean so you want to be careful with eq so for instance so i i just took the the little limiter that i have on here i took the kind of the, the main mastering channel off for the stream because it takes a bit of a a bit of processing i didn't want this thing to crash while we were doing the stream but um so for instance when i'm producing and when i'm mixing I'm, I, I usually try to keep if you look down to the bottom left here the stereo out channel where the the mouse is going around um i try to keep that um at zero basically before putting on any mastering so as you can tell kind of well below peaking here and then it flirts with peaking usually in the choruses so basically that's leaving you enough headroom to do what you want to do and then from there you know within the actual mixing of the track you want to be kind of discerning and that's where side chain compression can help for instance because then you're carving out out of all those reverbs tapestries and stuff you're you're carving out places for this kick to hit so for instance if we're hearing this 
this kick go through in the chorus here. And we have a ton of reverbs on, let me find a reverb channel, or even just this acoustic guitar. So these are side chain. In order to, they're side chain to the kick, that which means that when that kick is hitting, when the kick is engaging, when you're hearing the sound of the kick, it's ducking the frequency of that. And the same thing goes with this bass. So that's one thing, the low frequency textures, the sub frequencies that you want to be careful of. So that's uh, a trick that we do a lot with bass tones is that um, we carve out space for the kick in order to not have that low end be all be mushy. So for instance, you can see it's pretty massively ducking while these things are going on. And so, yeah, you just try to, I mean, they're mixing techniques and, and with a lot of reverb, you can get washy. And that's a, that's something that, you know, shoegaze bands use as an effect as like the, one of the main effects in the song is that kind of washed out yeah. vibe. I think we tried to take the best of that with, with these and take that, that feel. And then also, you know, use our experience and, and, and try to gear it towards a pop sound as well, where things kind of shine through where the vocals especially shine through where they are kind of washed out and cool and reverby, but they're also intelligible. You can tell the lyrics, you can tell the story that Cam's telling and you can tell, you know, the, the story that the instruments are telling. Fuck. Yeah. Well said. Thanks dude. I was just reading off. <laughs> yeah. We have a teleprompter behind us. You can't see. <laughs> Thanks um, for this. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's champagne Saturday, which is, uh, Thanks, stacks on stacks. Fuzz and statics. Fuzz and stacks. Fuzz and stacks. That's um, our producer name. So we had there are a few more songs. So we did today. We did philosophy of love. We did champagne Saturday, and we did fervor, right? And we did. Uh, is that all we did today? No, we started with the times that we had as well. Oh wait, did we do fervor? Yeah, wait, we, how many songs did we do? Johnzo. The only one we didn't do is um, I think we need to sleep. Really? Wow. So. We don't have that, do we? We don't have that ready right now. I mean, I can get it ready, but we'll do another stream. We'll do another stream and maybe just do one more song. We'll see. Do you want to try to show the people this studio? Um, Scott, I love you. I, we don't, so we don't have, I think we need to sleep ready to go right now. Um, I can get it so I'm sorry. I can do it. It's up to you. I'll take two if you want to kill three minutes. All right, not saying he's going to do it. Let's do it. All right, hold on. He's going to get that track set up. Scott, if you crash my computer. Scott. <laughs> um, let me see if I can move this camera. Um, I'll be away from the mic, so I'll, maybe Nat can chat. But um, I'm going to move the camera and just show some of the synths and this Nat's. Oh, we'll do it afterwards. Nat apparently is directing the stream. Yeah, so, dude. Scott is the man with the plan. Scotty doesn't know. Dear on his birthday. Nat, what a guy. That's what Scott's saying. Thanks, Scott. At least someone fucking appreciates it. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. My, I've talked about this. My neck tan from, from surfing is insane especially in this light like look at that it literally looks it looks like i'm wearing a turtleneck and there's nothing i can do about it it's just i you surf I, I either stop surfing there there are two options i stop surfing or i start hitting a tanning bed i should probably start hitting a tanning booth but it's crazy i have to point out the obvious because i'm sure some people watching this are like why is this guy's neck so tan you trust me you can see it from this angle uh my arms too let's see if you can see like my arms there's a huge difference you can see from my arms and my hands this is some great chain gang content too by the way i got some skinny arms but yeah my hands are much more tan than my arm because the wetsuit goes all the way there it's crazy um Omar Diaz i miss the old com team with the hairy arms what does that even mean i don't know my arms are still hairy. I don't shave my arms. They're not shaved. I've never shaved my arms. 
they're, they're, my skin's just much lighter there because my hands get tanned from surfing. Why am I talking about my <laughs> supposed hairy arms? I don't even remember that. There, there are a lot of Nickelback stories. Um, Chachi, it looks like facial growth. You're becoming a man. How about you getting boots? New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> New Jersey? I got boots. You got off the bus. I don't remember that. Uh, we're getting this track ready. We should be there in a couple of minutes. But um, yeah, this has been awesome. And I, I am recording this one. So um, like I said, I should have been doing this six months ago and cataloging all this all this stuff and archiving it but i didn't do it so um fortunately i'm recording this um and i'll probably put this up on youtube for people to watch but this has been a lot of fun um it would be cool to kind of do this with all the records but i don't keep in touch with most people i haven't spoken to tom powers in a very long time i hope he's doing well i haven't spoken to isom in a very long time i hope he's doing well that might be the curse of people who produce a chain gang record oh. you just don't i just stop being friends with them I'm not saying i'm not friends with those guys but we just don't talk as much anymore so maybe i'm not gonna maybe you and i are just gonna stop talking it's possible um does that mean no to this teenage love sound yeah we're not we're not gonna touch that song that's a very, very, very old, unreleased song. Oh, that one. But that was never a Chain Gang song. We wrote that to pitch to Chromio. And they didn't use it. <laughs> they never heard it. They never heard it. Um, yeah, Chachi, you're so welcome. We're going to do one more song. Yeah, it's, ready. it's almost ready. So we're going to talk about and break down. I think we need to sleep. So I may as well talk about this one now. Yeah. Um, so this song was original, it was originally co-written and produced by my good friend, John Kunkel of the project, the new division. Um, if you've never checked out the new division, they're a fantastic project. Um, I love that guy. And we've done a lot of work together. Um, so we did this track, but then after having worked with Nat, um, and I think some of the other producers and really kind of sonically figuring out how this album was sounding, um, it certain things weren't really in line with i think the overall sonic quality not to say anything about his production it just things were different different sounds were used it didn't it was just a different vibe so we had such a workflow by then yeah we, and we had such a workflow by then which is true um is that ready to go almost okay so um basically i spoke to john i was like hey would you be cool if we took this song kind of reproduced it uh still using some of your production elements some of the you know aspects of the session that we had but just kind of redo it on our own with nat and stuff and he was super cool obviously like he was still a co-writer on the song and everything but um i actually really really dig this track so we we i ended up bringing it to nat we worked on it together for a day um very happy with how it turned out um this is also one of the tracks on honeymoon drips and i was like i feel like this should have done better but um i don't know i think the story behind it's really cool just late nights with your significant other and they don't listen to you and <laughs> all you're saying is listen there's no need to talk about this now let's just go to bed so um i kind of like the i think the lyrics of this are very kind of fun and playful pretty dark in a way and kind of sad but in a playful way um ooh, we got a new division fan echo confetti is a fan of new division yeah the new division is awesome Chain Gang played with them a very, very, very long time ago, like back in 2011. That's how we were originally met. And then we ended up um, like reconnecting years later and yeah, working on a bunch of stuff together. Um, All right, let's do this. We'll see if, uh, if this one crashes the old computer. Yeah, we'll find out. Fingers crossed. But this is for Scott, but this is the last track we're going to do to uh, highlight the production of Honeymoon Drips, and I'm stoked to close it out with this one. So I think we need to sleep. Down on the ground, you and me, spilling my heart out, but there is no sound other than what you believe. What did I do wrong? Was it the 
this is this song is a very Laney influence what I took from that band something cause then it's not a waste of time we have gone up and down the street with the red wine that stains your teeth going nowhere what can't you see there's just one thing I want to say to you will you listen I hope you do can't wait to the Dawson's Creek. <laughs> What's her name again? Oh, look it up. For some reason, that it's chorus reminds me of something she would do. I don't know why. Go where the dreams are. I know we're not far. Feeling the guilt, taking shape. Hot burning heat waves. Oh, yeah, I Scott. think I'm afraid. May I confess that this night's a mess and. The drugs aren't working right this time We have gone up and down the street With the red wine that stains your teeth Going nowhere, what can't you see? There's just one thing I want to say to you Will you listen? I hope you do Can I wait till the morning view? I think we need to sleep Something goes out of time. Didn't have you ever noticed that on the song? No. In this bridge, I think it's my guitar playing. Like something. Like something got delayed. I don't know, but it's like it's like this character that I kind of just now have accepted and enjoyed. Oh, we did a fade out. On that. I love this ending. fade out though it kind of stopped oh true and i remember i brought that up to you i said like, why don't we just do a full fade out like, no dude he's like this is cool and uh, i was like I was probably just lazy, you probably just lazy. <laughs> i was like i want to <laughs> that's so awesome yeah this was fun this was a, a little bit different for in my in my process with the record because um yeah i was kind of co-producing but also mostly taking on the instrumental side taking the tracks that um you guys had recorded with john um and mixing and then i remember we did i was just kind of deleting the old vocals in this we did re-record the vocals we did yeah we did a lot of the same vocals and then but there some of the production though is different as well right we? i don't i don't know i'm not seeing a bunch of stuff that we i think we added a couple snare hits that i'm looking at um and some other kind of doodads but oh, but wow. there again i mean I, i'm sure that your this is your juno strings that you guys do yeah so maybe i had my my memory wrong i think it was mainly just the vocals so we added we did add this yeah i think it was just the vocals oops um what's that bass chord progression let's see Yeah, that's nice. It's like pure moods volume two. <laughs> so I think we did, I did so, I, you know, I did some creative mixing on this stuff. So this was their original piano stem. It's kind of that hammered eighth note piano. Or a quarter note, I should say. 
And then I think I flipped the high octave. And then also actually made a low octave of it. Let's see. It kind of creates this nice little palette of music and then send it to some reverb. These kind of little dry, plucky guitars that I really like. So dry and up front, which is cool. Yeah, I think we did more of that. So th this was, again, we're using that uh, transient designer to make it really kind of harsh, but this is what it sounded like. So we hit that transient designer and brighten it up and then smash it. <laughs> Out of context, that just sounds so funny. <laughs> it's awesome. um, let's see what other doodahs we have. We it looks like we added this snare to it. Yeah. It's for the best turn I love that shit. Oh wow, it goes on much longer than I thought. Go where the dreams are. I know we're not far. Feeling the guilt taking shape. Top gun guitar. Top gun. Goose is back. Goose is loose. Maverick. That's what it was now. I really liked focusing on simple guitar leads for this record too. Looks like I misspelled guitar pluck one over <laughs> here. It looks like it's get get guitar. Get to R. It's a guitar played by OAR. <laughs> There's your spire lead. Yeah. I wanted something that sounded kind of cheap and cheesy there. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was doing that, you, I don't know if you were fully sold in that sound at first, but I was just like, there's something about it. I want this to be this kind of just, I don't know, innocent sounding synth. And I think I got the job done. Got the job done, baby. Um, yeah. And then vocally, I think we kind of just took the vocals that you guys had done and just re redid. We were just so, you know, in a groove at that point um, that I think we kind of quickly. Um, yeah, we did it. We did it pretty quick still got a groove back you yeah know I mean? it's for the best turn away go where the dreams are i know we're not Add far some harmony ideas. Feeling the yep i burn in heat waves i think i'm afraid mm. and then um we kind of hit these on different tracks just because it, it's a bit of a overlapping chorus. So as you can tell, th these are all the chorus leads, but because the lines overlap a little bit, we got them on so separate tracks. I actually got that idea. I remember, shout out to Tony Hopper, producer, mixer extraordinaire. He um, worked on Daydream with me, but I remember I showed him some of these songs and I showed him this one and he's like, you know, you should have done with this chorus. It's like, what is like, you should have recorded those lines separately. Right. And I was like, oh. So I think when we came in to re-record this, I was like, we should do them separately. Yeah. So thanks, Tony Hopper. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Thanks, T. We have gone up and down the street With the red wine that stains your tea Going nowhere, what can't you see? There's just one thing And then we got the uh, the high octave, boys choir We have gone up and down the street With Ooh. the red wine that stains your tea Going nowhere, what can't you see? harmony There's just one thing there we go. Yeah, that might be it. That's it. That might be it. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. I think that's pretty fun. Let's show these people the studio a little bit. Okay, quick little tour of the studio. We're going to grab this stuff awkwardly. Let me see if I can make this work. You want to change the camera angle? All right. So, yeah, it's just gonna work. Camera kind of in a situation might be a little, might be a little tough. We don't have too much slack, but so kind of about it. Here are the um, synths that we're talking here. You want to hold this? Oh yeah. 
So these, this is the Juno 60 synth um, that we use a lot. These are the kind of the two main workhorses, I would say, on your record cam. This is the 106, which came, I believe, after the 60. Um, and this is the Juno 60. Um, so a lot of those kind of lush um, pads were done on the 106. And a lot of the bass lines are done on the 60 and the kind of arpeggiators that we um, would use as these cool textures. Actually, I can... So this is kind of like one of the main bass tones that we use on the record. That's kind of this preset that we um, kind of tweaked and but used a lot because it's really dark and lush. And then it has this cool arpeggiator that we messed around with a lot. So that was fun. That's our 106. We got our uh, Kemper down there in the rack that bad boy uh the main vocal channel for all you freaks out there is this uh bae uh preamp it's a 1028 preamp um kind of a neve copy remake going through our um ua 1176 solid state compressor and then getting touched a little kiss off the uh, ua la2a down here um those are the synths we, so we use kind of those those two top synths a lot and then the six track a fair amount for some cool lead lines and then back there's vocal alley watch the slack there we go there's vocal alley there's the telly that we used a good amount telecaster or uh u87 mic that we used for some um, acoustic stuff vocal setup cam would be in the corner put baby in the corner <laughs> and that's cam hello that's it let me put that down. That's good. Awesome. Um, well, we really hope you enjoyed this. Um, as I've said before, um, I'm trying to figure out the future of the Twitch page and see what's going to go down. Um, you know, beginning of March, moving into April. So um, I figured it'd be the great time to really kind of do a lot of these. Uh, a lot of this content and I'm very happy to have Nat here. I really appreciate the last two days have been awesome. It's been very fun for me to go through these tracks and um, kind of take a little trip down memory lane. So um, huge thanks to Nat, huge thanks to the hard work he put in for this record, huge thanks to the hard work he put in for these last two days. And I'm glad we got to go through everything and I'm hyped. And um, thank you all of you for, joining us and spending today almost two and a half hours with us which is very 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 kind there'll be a test tomorrow morning <laughs> on sidechain technique there you go yeah nat has all your info and data now unfortunately so <laughs> yeah, expect sorry. a survey <laughs> but um rate us five stars five stars and yeah so this is great i'm you know finally got to do a honeymoon drips uh focus stream which which is really really great so um that's that for this. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cam, at, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me on the record. Pleasure. Thanks pleasure, for man. letting me work on your project. Dude, so hyped. And uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Shout out to Scott. Shout out to Scott. Shout out, Shout to, out to everybody. Um, but yeah, 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow, tomorrow morning for the Noisy Heaven radio show. So come hang out for you that. Slap any bass? No bass tomorrow, but... We still got a stream left for the Pollen EP, so we'll do a stream for that. And then from there, I've got to figure it out because we are out of Chain Gang, Heavenward, and Teenage Race content. So you got to write more shit. Got to write more shit. But thank you all so much. This was so much fun. Again, thank you, Nat. Um, and yeah, I recorded this, so expect it up on the YouTube channel somewhat soon. But much love, everyone. <laughs>